Hi, welcome to another video in which I'll be sharing three tips to operate Scheme Station seamlessly. Before we get started, please pause for a second and have me subscribe to my channel. Thank you for your support. Okay, so let's get into these three tips. Tip number one is no vowel number. So what I mean by that is, let's, let me show you in Scheme Station. All right, so wherever when you run like a single run, you go to sample info here and you have to enter like a sample location over here. Where if you notice, there always uh, like a note saying blank and run if no end try. So basically, you actually can leave it empty. So you don't have to en enter anything over here at all. Or when you are run running a sequence on a sequence table, you don't need to enter anything over here if you don't want to. So what that means is, if you don't want anything uh, over here, what the software uh, does it thinks that this is going to be a blank. So it will be very useful in some scenarios. Let me show you some of them. Okay, so let's say that you have uh, uh, Let's say you have a simple easy like this. Okay, so where you have like you have an auto injector auto uh, Liquid injector to inject the sample directly into the inlet then go through the column then go to the FID something like this and uh, let's assume that uh, for some reason, you you start seeing some kind of like uh, some weird carryover coming uh, coming on your chromogram, and you really have no idea uh, where they're coming from, right? So let's let put into that situation, and what you need to do is, I think the first step to troubleshoot this kind of problem is you want to figure out where they're coming from. So the first step is you want to isolate the path so that you know which part is causing the problem. So it's very useful way is. Uh, you can start the GC without injecting anything. So that would be a very quick way for you to tell whether your inlet is clean, your column is clean, and your FID is clean. So that's a good way, right? So most of the time, I think uh, I think many users, what, how they are doing is they will put like an empty valve, you know, like a valve without any solvent or anything inside. And uh, so that's mean the syringe will withdraw air and inject it. In, inside the inlet and then through the column, but you know that some column they don't really like oxygen. So oxygen can oxidize some so stationary phase. So that's that's not very helpful to do. So so that's why it will be it will come very handy uh, in this situation that if you don't put anything over here, you leave it empty. What what can station does? It will actually not inject, not move the syringe at all. It will just start the EC immediately. Uh, without injecting anything. So by that way, you can uh, easily confirm whether your inlet over here, your column and your FID is clean or not. So you see, that, that's a very, 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 very useful way to, to troubleshoot. Okay, the second scenario, it will be very handy. Uh, uh, assume that you have, okay, let me show you. Okay, so this is an OEC. Let's assume that you have a EC where you do a, a gas sample injection, where you have a, sem a valve over here. So, uh, uh, let, let's, let's put into the situation that you want to keep injecting your sample. Let's say you have an online sample, keep feeding into it, into the sample loop here, and you want to keep injecting every five, 10 minutes or something like that. You don't want to be you know, uh, at the GC every five minutes or 10 minutes and press start the button, then you time, uh, you time yourself again, or five minutes you come back and you press the start again, right? That could be uh, not a very good way at all. So what, what, what you could do over here actually is, you can leave this one empty. And what, what that means is the software will think that this is gonna be blank. In fact, you are injecting your sample, but the software, because it thinks it's a blank, it will start the GC automatically without uh, having you over there and pressing the uh, start button, right? You can try that yourself, it will work immediately, right? So that's a very useful tip for you. So that is tip number one. For tip number two, that's actually how to call our specific method at the end of a sequence or a single run. So uh, this one will come very handy in a way that let's put, let's put into a situation that uh, I think the very first uh, scenario is uh, you, you run a single method or you run a single sequence and uh, you don't want to be there at the end of a sequence or at the end of a single run and switch the method to another one. Let's say a standby method uh, because you want to, you you rush going home, right? You don't want to wait for another one hour. Let's say run time is one hour. You, want to, you don't want to be there for another one hour and wait for that one and press uh, the uh, stop button and then change to a standby method, anything like that, right? You don't want to do that. I mean, if you run a sequence, you can basically enter uh, at another line uh, to the sequence to load that standby method automatically for you. But if you are doing single run, there's 
almost impossible for you to, unless you queue in or queue in another method inside the uh, inside but some uh, older version of Camtation there's no uh, option for you to queue in method so that's why that's why this uh, tips will come in very handy for you regardless of which version you are using so let me show you how to do that so if you go to uh, Camtation over here uh, Okay, let's say right now you see I'm at a standby method and let's say I want to perform a run and then uh, at the end of the run, I want to load another, another method for me. It doesn't matter which method you want to load as long as the method is available inside your method folder, right? So, so let me show you how to do that, okay? Uh, uh, first of all, let me show you how to add that one into when you do a single run. So usually when you do a single run, you go here and enter whatever over here and that's just you start the run and at the end of the run, we just uh, the met the EC will just be uh, at that same method, you know, no change at all. So what you have to do is, I can show you that you can go to method over here, and then you go to runtime checklist on top here. Then you can check something called post run command and macro. This is not able to see over here, but I actually say post run command macro. You can check this box and you type in a command over here. The command is actually very simple. You type load load method no space okay load method then you enter a space and then what you have to do you want to find you want to put in the folder the part of your folder uh what you have to do so let me show you that for my jc the the folder is something under like this so depending on which version you are using it may be a little bit different but my one is like this so i'm going to copy this over here and then uh i go back to kim station and i put this one i uh, put in a code then remember to add a backslash over here and then you close the code then you go by comma then you add the code again then here you can type in whatever method you want to load so let's say i want to go back to uh def yc method so then i can type def underscore yc dot m then close the uh, uh, code over here right so you just need to do like something like that so i say okay so that's one way for you to do so that's the way when you run single run. If you are running a sequence, you can also do that. You go to sequence and sequence parameters over here. Then you put under like post sequence command macro over here. You can type in the same command just now. Load method, the pathway, and then comma, then the method. All right. So uh, once you do that, what happen is uh, after the run finish, let me show you that one. So let me put the run. Uh, so you see I have a command over here. As I'm going to save the method. Then what I'm going to do, I just uh, declare like a like a test run. Okay, so I put one over here. Let me start the run. So the run will be only uh, 0.5 minutes. Like if, if you see over here, I put only 0.5 minutes so that that will be very quick. So let's wait for 30 seconds and we see what will happen. So right now we are on a standby method on top here. And the EC is starting soon. All right, so it's starting 0.1 minutes right now. So wait for a few seconds, then you see that the method, the default EC method will be uh, in automatically. Okay, 0.3 minutes right now, 0.4. All right, 0.5 minutes. Okay, so once you reach uh, 0.5, when you reach 0.5 minutes over there, by right, the EC should load the standby method, uh, the default EC method just now, but because I'm using a virtual uh, version over here, and uh, it, uh, somehow it doesn't stop the EC from which so I have to hit the stop manually from here, but you don't have to do that when you run the real EC, okay? Yep. So uh, take a look at this one where I hit the stop run over here. So what happened, the, the, the software will now load the, a command uh, the post run command just now and you you can see that the four year c method is loaded right here so you can you can basically load any method that you like to have so okay so i think that's a, a useful way for you to do that right so that is tips number two okay let, let me show you tips number three so tip number three is about manual integration so let me show you that real quick right here okay so uh, i can pick any data all right, so uh, let's say this is uh, your program and 
Uh, if you notice every time you do a manual integration, let's say I don't like my integration like this, let's say I want to draw my integration like this, then you happen to see something like the error curve turn 45 degrees like this and it doesn't look very nice. Sometimes you cover something else, so it doesn't look very nice. So uh, I can show you a tip how to remove this one easily. Okay, uh, if you go to, uh, if you have happen to have all of your uh, game station CDs, installation CDs, whether which version, I have a couple of versions over here. Um, so I, hopefully you are one, in one of these uh, versions. If it's not, let me know in the comment. I can send you uh, the, the, the file that we are go I'm going to talk about. Okay, so my version right now is C0110. So uh, let me show you where it is. You go to C0110, then you want to go to uh, this number two. And then there is something called UCL over here. Then you go to macros. Then you go to macros number nine. Then we will run macro.moac, it's called T-M-A-N-A-N-N, -A -N -N, right? So you just simply copy this macro, copy it, and you go to a core folder. So the core folder will be a little bit different depending on which version you are using. So uh, uh, the, the version I'm using is C0110, and you see my, my the link is something like this on top here. If you are using another version and you can't find this core folder, let me know. In the comment I, I i show you where to find that so once you are in this call folder just paste uh the, the file just now the tma the, the macro just now so uh, i already have i already copy before so i asking me whether i want to over overwrite this one but that's fine once you first copy you will not should, should not ask you the question okay i will cancel this one because it, let, let me show you that uh, tma so i already have it here see so once you uh, copy this one over and you can go to this uh, uh, game session and what you have to do you can type in macro down here and then you type uh, sorry macro and then you type in the name just now that you found uh, the name just now the complete name over here everything you copy the name and then you go down here again macro the whole thing over here comma go something like this you type like that and once you type, when you finish typing, what happens is you go to graphic over here. You should have one option. It's called, uh, I mean, this menu will be added automatically once you finish typing. It will say manual iteration annotation over here. So if you uh, uncheck this box, this uncheck, and whenever you do manual iteration, the error counts will not be showing anymore. And when you print a report, uh, let me verify the report. Okay. When you print the report, it will not be showing that uh, like 45 degrees uh, uh, error counts anymore. You see, even the iteration is completely manual over here, right? And it's very beautiful that you can actually return to the default. If you check this one, then you will show back over here. And uh, it will be showing in the report as well when you print the report, right? So this is a very useful way for you to uh, see over here. Right, so that's a very useful way. So uh, just to let you know that this macro is contributed by the Agilent community, so it's free to use. It's already uh, uh, verified and inspected by Agilent, so it's free to use and it's safe, right? So uh, let me show you a quick one. If you are using other versions, so let me show. This is a new version. Uh, if you are using C0106, for example, and that will be under okay, my macro. Let me mount it. Okay, that will be the same you know, this two over here as well you go to ucl and you go to lc that is from lc you don't have from gc gc there's no uh, macro so far so lc you can go to macros then you have number nine the same one so which is tma and then over here copy this one to the core folder type the macro in the command line in uh game section just now we did then you're good to go Right. So those are three tips that uh, I think is very useful for you when you come when it's come to operation, operating uh, camp station every single day. So I hope you enjoy these tips and uh, let me know in comments if you have any questions. Uh, I hope uh, uh, subscribe to my channel and uh, I'll see you in my next video. Bye bye. Mm -hmm.